War Mongrels is a new real-time tactics game from developer Destructive Creations in the style of games like Commandos and Desperados. Set in World War II, War Mongrels gives you the opportunity to see the story from the other side, playing as German soldiers. Well, at least to some extent. What I had hoped that would mean would be genuinely seeing it from the German soldiers' perspective, fighting against the Allies and truly believing what they were doing was right. What we actually get here as our main characters are two German deserters, who quickly become wrapped up in the resistance and aim to fight back against the regime. While this obviously makes it far easier to like the characters, especially when one, Eivold, is voiced by Doug Cockle, the voice of Geralt of Rivia, well, well. it makes things a little less interesting than what I was hoping we'd get here. However, it is at least a nice change of pace to see things from a resistance perspective instead of a US or British one. And it should be said, War Mongrels does not shy away from showing the horrors of World War II, which is something to be aware of going into the game. But of course, the big question is, how does War Mongrels play? Well, as ever, this series is about first impressions, and for me, on this occasion, this is after about 8 hours of play, or 4 missions into the 12 that the game has to offer. So, starting out, after a quick tutorial you're dumped into a frankly massive map, and set an objective that will require you to either take down or sneak past dozens of enemies. Generally, the best bet for doing this is through stealth. Enemies have individual lines of sight that you'll have to steer clear of to avoid alerting the whole area, though there are plenty of bushes to hide in, and if you crawl, you can pass through certain areas of enemy lines of sight that are indicated by stripes rather than a solid white. Your initial two characters, Manfred and Eivald, each have abilities that can lure enemies and abilities that can take them out. And while Eivald is a bit more of a fighter, both of these characters feel quite similar and both can get the job done. As more characters are introduced, the gameplay opens up, with more unique abilities to keep things interesting and give you new ways of achieving your objectives. And while each mission will have different characters available to you, each with unique abilities, the large maps and heavy focus on stealth remain. This makes each mission feel almost like a huge puzzle. Figuring out the path you want to take to your objective and which enemies you can take down without being caught in the line of sight of another makes for some truly compelling gameplay. And this is helped massively by a tactical mode which runs the game at an incredibly slow pace so that you can plan out your move and execute it all at once with the press of a single button. This is vital for timing certain actions that have a very fine window in which they can be completed such as taking out two enemies at once, or running past an enemy while his back is turned for the briefest second. And seeing the new possibilities every time you take out an enemy, because now someone else is vulnerable who used to be in that enemy's line of sight, gives a great sense of progression throughout each level. There are some real oddities, however, in what the game will and won't let you do. For example, why can't I jump over a four-foot fence and go round the outside to avoid the gaze of certain enemies? Our characters here are trained soldiers at their physical peak, and you want to tell me that they're thwarted by a garden fence. It's impossible. It just doesn't sit right. There's also the disguise mechanic, which sees Manfred disguise himself as a German soldier, and he can then walk through enemy ranks without anyone suspecting he shouldn't be there, aside from a few officers dotted around the map who may well know every soldier in their unit. This mechanic makes sense, but it also makes the game, which is otherwise an extremely challenging title, ridiculously easy. Walk to a dark corner, whistle, wait for your enemy to come over, and then take them out, all without ever having to sneak or ever being suspected of a damn thing. The only downside is that for some reason you can't take this disguise with you between levels, and you'll have to find a new one. Weird. Now you may have noticed earlier that I said that stealth was the best bet, and not the only way. And that's because there is a combat mode here that sees you take control of one of your characters moving with WASD and shooting enemies by clicking them. Of course, this will alert basically everyone within earshot, and really isn't all that viable unless you've already cleared out most of the enemies around you, but it's still a nice inclusion as a last resort. It is possible to funnel enemies towards you through a choke point and take out a lot of them this way, but long reload times and short ammo capacity make sure this isn't too big of an issue. So overall the gameplay has been challenging, but fun and satisfying to find the answers to the puzzles it poses. 
but, and this is a massive but, this is one of the most buggy and broken releases I've played in a long time. Now ideally I would have had this video out to coincide with the launch of the game, as I did have access to the game pre-release, and releasing this video at the same time as the launch of War Mongrels would be the way I'd get the most views. But the devs requested that reviews and similar content were not recommended before the release version, which I assumed meant that some of the myriad of problems would be fixed. And so I waited, and played a few hours after launch, and those problems are still there. So buckle in, because there's a lot to talk about here. Firstly, the checkpoint system in the game is awful. It's common to have the game checkpoint you in the middle of an action, and the fact that you've had to reload probably meant the action didn't work. So you have to quickly fumble around to try and find a way of cancelling it before it happens again. I've had it where enemies are halfway through being lured to positions that didn't work. Some occasions where I've been in the process of a move that I now know gets me spotted, and even a couple of times where enemies have already been alerted when the game saved a checkpoint, meaning that I either have to run and hope that they lose me somehow, or go into that combat mode and hopefully there's not too many of them to take out. There's been a couple of issues too where the game would load entirely the wrong save after a death, meaning that I was put way further back for no particular reason. As you can see here, several enemies I'd already dealt with are now suddenly back at their posts. Next we have character pathing. Now there's a funny incident I caught here, where to move about a yard, the game wants to send my character all the way around the map. My assumption is that this is because there's some kind of invisible fence in the way, as I also couldn't lure enemies past it. And while this is obviously ridiculous, the main issue here is actually that characters will collide with scenery and not complete their moves. Look in this clip, I've instructed Lucas to run and kill an enemy, and halfway through he gets stuck on a fence, and stops. And in a game that relies so heavily on timing to avoid enemy patrols, this kind of thing just isn't acceptable. Then there's the brain dead AI. On multiple occasions the AI knew something was wrong, but just could not decide what to do about it. In this first clip, the enemy on top of the roof literally saw me kill one of his fellow soldiers, but despite knowing this, he can't do anything about it, because he's on a rooftop that he is programmed not to get down from. Even though there are ladders and other soldiers nearby, he just gets upset for a few seconds before returning to his day as if nothing has happened. Then we have this machine gun clip, where the enemies know they're under attack, but just basically do nothing, except occasionally run into my cone of fire. They could search, they could find a way to get round to get to the shooter, they could even fight back with gunfire or a solid grenade throw would probably deal with the problem on its own. But no, they just wait for the inevitable and sort of mill around until they get shot. And alongside all of these, there's also the more boring bugs, like in this clip where the game refuses to knock out an enemy for some reason, and the only way I found to fix it was to use a bottle, which in this game is a valuable resource for Eivald, as he can use it to take out two enemies at once, or use it as a luring strategy. So I've had to give up some of the advantage I have to fix the game. And it's for those reasons that my overall opinion of whether or not you should buy War Mongrels has to be… not yet. There's plenty here to enjoy, and the gameplay scratches a tactical itch for me, but in its current state it just doesn't feel like a finished product. Now, there's a strong chance that a week or two down the line, a lot of these issues will be patched out, and this will be a much more easy recommendation, and I truly hope that happens. But all I can do is talk about the game that I have in front of me, and at the moment it just doesn't justify a strong recommendation, particularly not at its £31.99 price tag. Anyway, that will about do us for today, maybe this one will be worth revisiting when it's been patched, but for now leave me a like if you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, let me know what you thought of War Mongrels down in the comments, and subscribe for more like this if you haven't already. I've been Nathan, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.